go into the doctor's office, get a prescription, and go right next door. And get We're you. live. What? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Rick, what are you talking about, Willis? Eight minutes to show time. All right, we are excited. We are excited. I'm like, I'm seeing the old one. The new one has it. I'll look on my phone. But you don't want to share the old one. Okay, West White is live right now, and I got work to do, so y'all talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> Uh, the camera is not on us. The camera is on the timer because yes. that is important. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes, they can hear us. Did the new one come up? It did. And I am sharing now to all our friends and non friends alike. So little of what we do is true with that, I believe that. Right, Nancy, I'll have to remind you next time to turn on the Do Not Disturb. What happens when somebody tries to call? Does that cut off the uh, broadcast? Does it, does, does it stop the broadcast, Nancy, when they call? Mine says broadcast interrupted, but I don't know if that's just because long as go or... I, I, I... Yeah. Okay. Let, take, we'll start in another minute that we've got to uh, make a change. Say, hey, are we on? We're on right now. Hey, we'll be starting in just a minute, guys. We just got to make one small change, okay? So let them know we're going to hang up. We're going to shut down and, and start it back up again. Sorry, Carl. I imagine this is messing you up. 
Messing you up too, isn't it, Nancy? So you'll have to share them all again. Well, let's see if we can survive this. Let's stay on. Okay, that means it's showtime. So you restarted the internet or whatever you need? No, I did not. Okay. Facebook and Living Bread, and we hope you're having a great feast. In our studio tonight, we have James and Katie and Nancy. Good evening, y'all. Hi, how are you doing? I wanted, I wanted to point out that behind Katie and, and James, we have the um, unleavened bread and the wine. We do not drink wine on the show. It's just a prop. But you can go ahead and eat the unleavened bread if you're hungry, James. I appreciate that. I was thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> and we also have Carl Nocktribe connecting uh, us to YouTube. So hey, Carl. Carl, thank you so much. Yes, thanks a million, Carl. Absolutely. Now, James and Katie, I understand that you were in Memphis last week keeping the first part of the spring festivals. That's right. We were with There's a robot here. <laughs> you can scare people. I mean, it's fine. And I heard something interesting about Wilmy Nelson, who, you know, he smokes a lot of marijuana. At the Academy of Country Music Awards show, Willie announced that he was writing his memoirs. He said that in his memoirs, he'll explain how marijuana has affected his life. Oh, I can tell you how it's affected his life. He started writing a band, and James is going to talk about God's love. But first, let's ask God to bless our show tonight. Would y'all please bow your heads? No. Eternal Father in heaven, we're so thankful to you for this opportunity that we have to all get together at the beginning of your Sabbath day, even if we're doing this electronically. This is a wonderful opportunity for your people to get together and talk about God's word and to talk about our Christian lives and how we can better let our lives shine and let our light shine so that we can glorify you better. So please be with us on this show tonight. Help us to uh, have love for one another. Help us to rightly divide your word. Uh, help us to do your will at all times and in all things. We ask these things and give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, before we get going, we want to remind you that we want to hear from you tonight. Please talk to us. And share. Uh, share button. <laughs> oh, I, I got so excited I said it first. Please hit your share button. We don't ask you for money. Nope. We never accept money. All we ever ask is that you hit the share button. So please do that for us tonight. And don't forget to write to us and let us know if you need prayer. We'll pray for you privately off the air so we don't embarrass you. And don't forget to write to us if you're sick and you need an anointed cloth. That's right. So please let us know how you're doing. Uh, on last week's show, we talked about uh, how ministers are to conduct themselves within the ecclesia. We talked about how a good minister can really help a church and how a bad minister can hurt a church. And if you didn't see that show, you can go back. You can watch it either on my Facebook page or at dynamicchristianministries.org. And we didn't finish that show. We're uh, not done with this issue of ministers in the church there's so much more to talk about. There's and, a lot in the Bible about it. Right, and I think no. we're going to talk about it next week, because next week James and Katie won't be here. That's right. But in two weeks, James and Katie will be back, and I think Steve and uh, Susan will be back then, too. We're going to have a big Hopefully. crew. We'll yeah. We're going to have a full house, and we're going to talk about Pentecost, mm -hmm. because uh, by the time we're back in two weeks, the Days of Unleavened Bread will be gone, mm -hmm. and it'll be time for us to start preparing for Pentecost. Nope. And eating pizza on Friday night. And eating again. pizza. And let's let's not just think of Pentecost, you know, a day or two before it comes. Let's start planning for it. Let's start thinking about it. We've already made plans for Pentecost. We've got a big day planned we do. for uh, the Sabbath before and for Pentecost. Here with us tonight, Barb Shanks. She did tell us that the broadcast stopped and started. I think we've got it fixed now, Barb, but let us know. Mm -hmm. uh, Bonita Miller said, Good evening, y'all. Mary Young Perkins says, Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy, Happy Sabbath, Sabbath to you, Sabbath. too. Trudy said, Hi from Salisbury, North Carolina. Hello, North Carolina. Yes, yeah, so are we going to be on YouTube tonight? We are, unless something has happened to Carl. Okay. Uh, Reed Harding Bradwell said, Shabbat Shalom from South Alabama. 
Um, let's see. Oh, Benita tells us that she's from Cochawinty, North. It looks like Chaco, Chacawinty. <laughs> okay, North Carolina, though. Yeah. Uh, Michael McCarthy was counting down with us. Hopefully, he stayed with us. Um, Mimi says, waves to all. Shabbat Shalom from Western Canada. Hi, Mimi. Hey, Mimi. We're so Mimi. glad you're with us tonight. A little smiley face. Larry Garbs Jr. says, hi, y'all. Oh, you all. Sorry, you must be a northerner. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, Francis Young says, Happy Sabbath, everyone. And uh, Anita, who signs in as Chris Cruz. It's not there. In fact, some folks read the following scriptures as a reason to say that the Bible actually says it's okay to smoke marijuana. Nancy, would you read those verses for us? Genesis 1.29 says, Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. Genesis 3.18 says, It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. Genesis 9.3 says, Everything that lives and moves throughout, uh, about will be food for you. Just as I gave you the green plants, now I give you everything. 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 Whoa. Psalm 104.14 says, He makes grass grow for the cattle and plants for people to cultivate, bringing food forth from the earth. Now many Christians make the argument that God created the herbs, including marijuana, for us, for our use. Nancy quoted Genesis 1.29. This is the scripture I hear quoted the most by the pro-marijuana Christians. What's interesting is that Christian proponents of marijuana are especially fond of quoting the King James Version for, uh, of this passage because it uses the word herb or herb. Yeah. I hear about this one all the time from church people who tell me that this herb, comfrey leaf, is good for arthritis, bruises, strains, cuts, eczema, gastritis, sore throat, and sunburn. So, you see, the word herb can be a loaded term when dealing with church people, new age hippies, and organic gardeners. Real positive thing. I'm an organic gardener. Not a new age hippie. Organic gardener. <laughs> but let's get real when it comes to herbs. Because we're talking about herbs, we've also got to talk about herbs like mistletoe. Now, let's not badmouth mistletoe from a Christian point of view, you know kissing under the mistletoe and all the pagan stuff that goes with Christmas. Instead, let's talk about mistletoe from a health point of view. Come on, it's a herb. Mistletoe is of the foradendron. Probably another I have pointed this, this stuff out to pro-marijuana Christians Sometimes they then switch gears on me and they say, well, all right, actually marijuana is, is not, a, a, not a herb. And they tell me that the word in Genesis 129 is really not a herb. It actually uses a Hebrew word that can mean simply plant. And then these folks go on to say that God has given us permission to consume any and all plants. It was in these four scriptures that Nancy just read. I don't think so. I think that it's obvious that Genesis 129 is talking about edible plants. For example, how many of you out there, and I want to hear from you, how many of you out there have eaten hemlock? Or poison ivy. Or poison ivy. <laughs> of course you have not eaten hemlock, because if you had, you wouldn't be here watching the show. You'd be dead. You couldn't raise your hand. Couldn't raise your hand anyway. Hemlock is a deadly plant. These Bible scriptures that we just read to justify smoking pot, there's nothing in the scriptures that says it's all right to smoke marijuana. Now, let's get to some other scriptures that pro-marijuana Christians use. Now, as Nancy reads them, I want you to remember these scriptures. They concern themselves with the consumption of alcoholic beverages. All right, Nancy, all right. read the scriptures. First Peter 5, 8. Be alert and be of sober mind. Of what mind? Sober, sober mind. Sober mind. Your enemy, mind. the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. First Thessalonians 5, 8. 
But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and hope of salvation as a helmet. Titus 2.12. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly powers and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. Titus 3.1. Remind the people to be subject to the rulers and authorities. Wait, say that again. Be subject to the rulers and authorities. We're going to come back to that. To be obedient, to be ready to do whatever is good. Now notice this last scripture, Titus 3.1. It says that we are to be subject to rulers and authorities. What does that mean? It means that we are to obey the laws of the land. Sure, if a law contradicts the Bible, we've got to obey God rather than man. Even if we're going to be punished for it. And right now, at this time, this could change. But right now, the law of the land in most states in this country says that it's illegal to smoke pot. It just says that. And since God doesn't command us to smoke pot, then, brethren, we've got to obey the laws of the land, which usually say, unless you're in Colorado, they say that pot is illegal. Now, let's look at Deuteronomy 14, 26. Remember, this is the passage that talks about taking strong drink to the Feast of Tabernacles. God clearly says, this is okay. And, and when the Torah talks about strong drink in this passage, it is definitely, absolutely, positively talking about alcoholic beverages. If you're a teetotaler like me, I don't drink. And if you're a teetotaler, that's fine, don't drink. But be like me and go ahead and abstain. But don't say that God doesn't allow al alcoholic beverages to go to the feast because the Torah clearly allows it. So the question comes up, well, if you can take strong drink to the feast, why not a little weed? Well, the answer to that is, there are several reasons why. Let's look at a few. And I've got to set the stage for this discussion by letting you know about a situation that we have in the church at this time. This is not something that happened back in the old days. It's right now, contemporary, it's here and now. And I'm going to have to talk really, really carefully about this because I don't want to reveal any church people's names or any church's names. I don't want to reveal any names. And chances are you already know the name of the church and the people. Let's call this church the ABC Church of God or the BCD Church of God or the CDE Church of God. Whatever you want. XYZ. Or XYZ Church. It's one of the larger the CDG last church. church. Okay. <laughs> and, and again, this is your story, not making this up. You know, Katie's not going to throw in a punchline and make us all laugh. All right, true story. This Church of God group has been sponsoring a feast site in a really, really nice place for years. And at this same facility, there is an independent group. And there is a lot of fellowship at this site that crosses organizational lines between the independents and the ABC group or the XYZ group. In the independent group, there are about eight or ten people who smoke weed at this fee site. Wow. And they don't restrict their pot smoking to their rooms. They also smoke it outside in the evenings during the time when all this cross fellowship is going on. And I've been told by several people, not just one, but by several people that during the dark hours of the feast at this fee site, you can actually smell pot at that place. Now, think about this. This is a recipe for disaster. Suppose there's a local, uh, 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 the local authorities come in and do a drug bust. And I know someone's going to tell me, well, we've been doing this for years. It's never happened. Well, if there's one thing I know about drug busts, drug bust, it's this. The people who get busted never think it's going to happen. They always think they've got everything figured out. They think everything's safe. And then what happens? Boom! They get busted. How many times have you seen this happen to people that you know? I know many people this has happened to. Suppose you are a leader in this ABC Church of God where your church organization is keeping the feast. If there's a bust, how do you think that the publicity is going to go down of that bust? Do you think that the local newspaper is going to say, well, it was only some independent people who were involved in this illegal use of marijuana? No, I guarantee the local newspaper is going to publish the name of the ABC Church of God because the newspaper is not schooled in the intricacies of nomenclature of the many COGs that are out there.
That local paper is just going to publish that there was a pot bust and that the ABC Church of God was there. Right. Then, I guarantee it, this stuff's going to get picked up by the anti-Armstrong blog spots. Oh, yeah, there. they love that. Oh, yeah, and, that. It's to, and they're, they're read all over the world. Mm -hmm. It's going to be out there at the whole, in the whole planet. And then, and I guarantee this too, all of the conservative authoritarian COGs, and you know who they are, with the hierarchical church structures, they're going to say, well, see how that ABC Church of God is? They're going to say, we've been warning our people about them for years. So I have to ask the question, do we really need this to take place in the church? Do we really need this pot smoking at the feast site? If you're a Christian who smokes pot, I have to ask you, can't you give it up for eight days for the feast so you don't make things bad for everybody else around you? Mm -hmm. Is your habit so ingrained that you can't even confine yourself to your room when you're inhaling this stuff? Now, now I know they're going to say, well, I'm not addicted to pot. I can quit any time. Well, if that's true, why do you have to do it for the eight days and do it so publicly? Good point. These people say, well, we're not doing it publicly. Really? You're not doing it publicly? then why is it that several people have told me they can smell this stuff at the campgrounds of the ski site? Well, why they're not they, doing it privately. Because they're not doing it privately. <laughs> why do people tell me they have actually seen Church of God people smoking pot at this ski site? Mm. You can tell me that this stuff is not addictive, but then I have to say you apparently can't give it up for eight days. How non-addictive is it? Yeah. And, and what about you folks who don't want to have anything to do with pot, you, you're, you're, you don't want to be around it, but you go to the seaside. You don't have the slightest fear that your teenage kids are going to look around at what's happening and say to each other, well, look, church, people are smoking pot at the feast. It must be okay. Yeah. Mm. And what about the church leaders? Are you that obtuse that the ways of, uh, so obtuse to the ways of the world that you can't figure out all this stuff? These ministers tell me, well, I, you know, I, I'm just so non-worldly. I, I have no idea about situations like this. I, I, I don't know about these, these things. Really? I mean, we're told to be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. And then you're telling me that you're not because you can't figure out that the wheels could fall off of this situation really fast and it could become a major embarrassment to the church. Do we have a situation where all these people are in denial? The pot smokers, the parents with kids who, who don't like pot, the church leaders. And if they're in denial, is it because they have perhaps, and I don't know, I'm just asking, you tell me, maybe have they compromised themselves so much to the ways of the world that things that would have really gotten under their skin 20 years ago no longer bother them? Brethren, this is all crazy. It's madness. This is, this is wrong. This one incident alone demonstrates how so many of the people in the church of God have lost their way. And I constantly preach that so many of our people have lost their way. And, and when I say that, it makes a lot of people angry. I mean, really angry. Pitchfork and torches kind of angry. You know, the angry <laughs> You bring mob. that out in people. Yeah, I bring that out in people. <laughs> well, if the church has not lost its way on this issue... Can we honestly say before God that we are truly letting our lights shine? Is, is this really the way that we let our lights shine so that we may glorify our Father in heaven? I mean, even the Protestants, they have these bracelets they wear, and they say, WWJD, what would Jesus do? If Jesus showed up at your feast site, would he sit down at your campfire and take a few hits off of your joint? I mean, do you really believe that? All right. Let's forget about this situation at this feast site where the ABC Church of God and the independent pot smokers mingle a lot. Let's get back to a simple question. Strong drink at the feast is okay. The Bible clearly says that. Then why not a little weed? Well, here's why it's wrong. Because we know from Scripture that if you're drinking alcohol, whether it's at the feast or anywhere else, if you're drinking it for the purpose of getting high or drunk or wasting, wasted, you're consuming too much alcohol. That's right. The Bible is clear that drunkenness is wrong. Mm -hmm. So if getting high or drunk or wasted from alcohol is improper, why would getting high or wasted from weed then become acceptable? 
And let's be honest here. There is a right way to drink alcohol, and there is a wrong way to drink alcohol. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. When people drink alcoholic beverages, so often they do it because they like the taste. Personally, I don't get it. I have never, I liked, <laughs> I have never liked the taste of alcoholic beverages. Well, you don't like vegetables either. I don't like vegetables <laughs> either. I don't like the taste. But people tell me that wines are all different, and they definitely like the taste of certain wines over others. Mm -hmm. Same with different beers, sure. or same with different spirits. These folks who are drinking in moderation are doing it because they like the taste of the stuff, mm -hmm. and that's all right. So please don't tell me that the Christians that I know who drink alcoholic beverages are doing it because they're doing it to get wasted or drunk or high. No. The ones I'm around drink it because they like the taste and because it relaxes them, which is fine. They're not consuming alcohol to get wasted. Pot is a whole different thing. There's only one reason to smoke pot, to get high or get, get, get so high that you're wasted. There's no other reason to smoke it. All right. Let's get into one final issue regarding pot. There's a practical fact that plays into all of this. And a lot of you out there had parents or grandparents who smoked pot in the 60s. Mm -hmm. I confess I did. Mia culpa. The last time I smoked pot was in 1969. I have not touched it since. And it was only like 50, 60 years old. Though. And I was only 50 or 60 years old back in 1969. All right. You've got to understand that the pot that's out there today is not your grandfather's pot. No. It's a whole different thing than what people are smoking today. According to a study done in 2015 at the University of Mich Mich uh, Mississippi, the THC level, THC is the tetrahydro, uh, con uh, how do you pr how do you pronounce, canana, uh, or whatever. The THC, that's the chem chemical that gets you high in marijuana. And the THC level in the old days was less than 1.5%. 1.5%. It is now about 4.4. Wow. So it's more than double, almost triple. And here are some things that contribute to this major increase in potency. In the old days when we smoked weed, we smoked whatever was in our nickel bag or our dime bag. It contained everything. It actually cost a penny and a half. No, it cost five dollars <laughs> a ten. That's why we call it a nickel bag or dime bag. It was actually a nickel. <laughs> it, it, in the bag, it contained seed and stems. And seeds and stems don't have the THC that, that you need to get high. Mm. So when we smoked that, in addition to the leaves, we were actually reducing that drug's effects. Once in a while, one of us would get smart and sit there and pick all the seeds out. But that was too much work, so we ended up smoking it. That's why it was only at a 1.5%. Today, most marijuana that you get is just the leaves, which is where you get your, your buzz. In, t in today's weed, there are usually no stems and no seeds. It's just uh, the real thing. You know a lot about weed. <laughs> <laughs> I was say. No, I, I, I have to tell you, we watched a, it was a History Channel yeah. uh, show about it recently. Mm -hmm. You know, that, talking about uh, the move towards uh, recreational use and more like potent pot. We, we learned a lot about. We it. learned a lot, but but I didn't get this from the TV show. I actually went out and did some research. Oh. Okay, further in the old days, our pot usually came from Colombia. And if any old timers are out there my age, you remember we called it Columbia Gold. By the time we got Columbia Gold in our hands, it was at least several weeks old, probably several months old, maybe even a year or two old. Today, most pot is pretty fresh, which makes it a lot more potent. Now, you can get it grown right next door, right where they sell it. Exactly. I'm not bringing up any of these details because I want to scare you. This is not a show about fear. When it comes to religion, we don't teach fear. When it comes to saying you shouldn't smoke pot, we, we don't say you shouldn't smoke it, and we certainly don't want to put fear into you. When I was in high school, they made us watch this ridiculous 16 millimeter fi film called Reefer Madness. It was stupid. It showed how if you smoked a joint, you'd supposedly go crazy and do all kind of crazy things like kill people with a baseball bat, and you might even die. It was just a collection of misinformation. We're not doing that on this show. If you smoke weed, you're not going to go crazy. You're not going to jump off a bridge. You're not going to get a baseball bat and go out and kill people. Our purpose tonight is not to convince you even to refrain from pot. We're not going to tell you not to do that. Our purpose is to encourage you to let your light shine so that you might glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. 
That's what we're all about. We're not fear-mongering, none of that stuff. We want you to let your light shine so that you can glorify your Father in heaven. And it's my contention that you're not getting enough of that kind of preaching in your church. And so that's what we're here for, to encourage you to do that. It's now up to you. Let me say this again. It's now up to you to determine whether or not smoking weed helps you with that or whether or not it hinders you from doing that. Doing what? Letting your light shine so that you might glorify God. As we always say on this show, you work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Your relationship with God is between you and God and nobody else gets to be part of that relationship. On this show, it's not our job to tell you what to do. It's not our job to judge you. Judging is a job that's reserved only for Jesus. All we can do is point you to Jesus and encourage you to think real hard about the decisions that you make in Satan's age. Nancy, what kind of comments you got from the chat room? Okay, we got lots of comments. First of all, let's just say hi to Verge Cordell, Marita Reese, Ray Hall. Hey, bro. Hey. Uh, Maria Manning, Wayne Weiss, Susan Todd, Donna Ussery Toombs, uh, Jody Kennedy Cena, Tammy Brown Gilbert, Peter Kamen, hey, David Lynn. We got to talk about pot more often. Oh, Look at this oh, audience we got. It's, 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 <laughs> how's the video out there? Are we doing better? I, I yeah, think no. it's getting better. It, I think it stopped. Okay. Uh, Priscilla Hawkins, and on YouTube, we have Love and Proph Prophecy and Judy Cranford. Hi, so, all. Glad you're here with us. So, Maria has a lot to say about it. Let me read her comments back. Maria. To back. No, Mar oh, Maria Manning. Yes, Maria okay, Manning. Okay, Maria Manning. Yes, okay. Marita, Marita did not say anything. Sorry, Marita. Marita was ra hello. raised in Church of God Seventh day. That girl never smoked pot, I guarantee you. So, Maria says it should be okay to use as medical but not rec recreational use. I, I think that is a point that you made that we weren't even talking about medical use. That's an entirely different thing. Uh, Maria also says just like other types of herbs are used for med uh, medicinal use such as dandelions, parsley, etc. True. Even wine is okay to drink but not drunk on wine. So she is emphasizing your yeah, points. A little wine is good for the stomach but don't That's be right. a drunkard. Yep. Okay. And then I think I had one more which I have to look at my phone for. She said she disagreed with your pot statement. Yeah, there are people who do smoke it to get high, but there are people with ailments that smoke or eat I edibles agree. to get relief for their ailments, such as blood pressure, seizures, etc. It's a plant that people abuse it for the wrong reason, but others use it for a good reason. I, I think that's exactly what we were yeah, saying. I think, I think this person might have come in late because at the very beginning I said there is medic medicinal usage for uh, marijuana. For example, people with arthritis, doctors are now recommending it. Uh, glaucoma is another one. Um, uh, any kind of joint pain. So I want to acknowledge that there are medicinal uses for marijuana. Absolutely. No doubt about it. Katie, I think you've got some. I'm, I'm oh. not done. Oh, you're not done? <laughs> no. Oh, when you're done, Katie's got some Peter Kamen so. said marijuana is a controlled substance. Alcohol is not in that class. Um, Jason said uh, that it's been used. Uh, Jason Noss says it can be used for Crohn's disease, which we agree with as well. Um, let's see, uh, Benita Miller says from their research she's done medical, uh, medicinal marijuana is not smoked, it's the heating that produces the high. I know a lot of people who use it uh, medicinally do take it orally, so they don't smoke it, it's either in the edibles or just actual pills. And really? I, and it, yes, I know a doctor prescribed it for someone who was going through chemo, <coughs> that it would help them with their chemo, but it was pills, okay. not, not, um. Sure. So, yeah, Maria said she didn't catch the beginning. Maria and Manning, so yeah. that's good. We're with you, Maria. We okay. agree with you. Maria, Marion Young Perkins says too many folks are dying from the weed that's being sold today. And Tammy Brown Gilbert says, I say no to pot. <laughs> I, and, and the pot that's smoked today, a lot of it is laced with yeah. additional things. I didn't even bring that up. And um, you, you buy it illegally, you take your chances. Okay. Katie, you've got some comments we've gotten. Yes, we have three comments regarding using marijuana for medical uh, medicinal purposes. Trudy Cranford, I support medical marijuana, but I do not support smoking to get it high. Um, that's just hiding from your problems, and that is a fact. It's like overusing alcohol. Medically, I am for marijuana. I have seen the good it is doing where it is already legal. Mimi. 
I know someone who doesn't smoke it, but eats it for the pain of spinal disease. Well, just like you were talking about, Nancy. Um, if this person didn't use it, he would be in a wheelchair as he has allergies to all pain meds and even general anesthesia and Demerol and morphine. So this is the only thing that he can take for the pain. I don't believe in smoking it either, but I do agree it is as a pain med in these rare cases. Carl Lachtrag. Um, hey, Carl. <laughs> he is posting on YouTube. We got comments on YouTube too. Perfect. Um, Carl Noctrag says, some people champion it uh, for help with various disorders like dealing with the effects of chemotherapy. And then we also have two comments regarding uh, the overuse of alcohol at the Feast of Tabernacles in the past. Bill Lussenheide. Lussenheide. <laughs> Those pronunciations, man. Uh, the Church of God has had a problem with alcohol abuse for decades. That's true. The church has not done a good job in addressing it, and now we have opiate abuse showing up in the churches, yep. too. Wow. Yep. Um, great, he says sarcastically. <laughs> now that weed is legal, we can add another item that will be um, scrounged for many brethren. Or, yeah, scourged for many brethren. I advocate for more voluntary abstinence from all of these things and a greater sobriety for our brotherhood. The use of alcohol should be rare and special. The use of medicines, the same. We are suffering from an addiction rate in the COG that is close to that of the world, mm -hmm. and no one will inherit the kingdom while remaining in such a state. Be wise. Yeah, and, and before we go on, thank you, uh, Bill Lustenheit, for that, because a lot of times I get on this show and I talk about stuff that's been going on in the past or, or in the present, and people say, I don't believe you, Wes. I think you're making that stuff up. Bill is another old-timer in the church like me. He's been around forever, and he saw the abuse that people were doing in the church for years and years when it came to alcohol and he's right the opioid thing is now hitting us in the church and we gotta work on these things okay go ahead katie um so we also have another bill bill evans uh he says personally i never was one to uh to get into drinking at the feast not that it is wrong but in too many cases it was excessive and became one of the more important aspects of the feast for some another old timer that saw this all going on years ago okay, okay. gotcha go uh, one final comment about marijuana in general. Wanda Rivera, I feel that marijuana is not good. I was a smoker in the past and it affected me for years. The doctors tell me I have COPD, but I feel I don't. Don't you see that it alters the mind and any kind of smoke is no good for you? It's not normal. We are not born to smoke. Satan is working with many people trying to make it okay to smoke. Even the doctors are saying it's okay. Many people are looking for ways to say it's okay get closer to God through smoking. Very good. Thank you so much. Okay, so let me read some of the YouTube comments. Oh. Uh, Trudy says, even if it, they came from a place that was legit, is not, talking about people who smoked at the feast, is not at the feast, then they are doing it illegally. That's right. If you have a prescription, you need to make sure that the place that you're going to accepts your prescription because it's not always true. Um, and if they will not stop and... Any sin, then we must have uh, tough love and say go. Uh, Marion says if they frown on cigarette smoking, they should most definitely frown on weed. Uh, Trudy says if it's legal, I would be scared to buy it for a, uh, for a lot is getting cut with spice um, that's uh, called K2. Yep. And it is killing people from one or two inhaling. That's true. Mimi mentions that Canada is about to legalize it. Um, I actually thought you already did, Mimi, and I was planning a trip. I'm just no, kidding. You're not. Uh, but I did read that they were going to legalize it or maybe even had already. So I understood <laughs> that. Um, and the thing about that is it stays in your system. So uh, it is not okay for me to have it in my system at my job. So even if it's legal somewhere else and I went to smoke it recreationally, it would be wrong for me. So, because so, you could be drug tested that's at work right, and that's lose right. your job. That's right. right. So I wouldn't do it for that very reason. Um, and Trudy said she tried it in the 70s but found out she was allergic to it. Uh, let's see. Um, Carl says there are regulations for it in the states where it's legal. That's absolutely true. you got to follow those regulations. Um, Trudy says uh, that she would use it if they <coughs> legalize it and um, because, of, uh, because of a condition that she has and if it was prescribed for her. So I think that's pretty much it. Um, okay. So people all are, I mean, at least the people that are chiming in are in agreement. Oh, uh, I forgot Roger Martin joined us and Horse Overmite. Hi, y'all. So um, Horse, says he's, Horse says he's glad we addressed the issue. 
uh, tried to chat on our tra channel but couldn't get it to work um, on the YouTube channel. Sorry about that. Um, Marjorie Martin's against it totally. Says it's a gateway drug. And on average, kids who try pot will do other drugs due to peer pressure. I've heard that too. Um, and uh, did I say Jackie, De Ken Jackie Kennedy Cena says we got to obey the law of the land. So I okay. think everybody watching us is in agreement with this. Um, that it may have medical uses, but All right. you know, well, if I can, you know, and I, I'm probably gonna, you know, be the unpopular person here, right here. I've been in the health and fitness industry now for about six years, and so marijuana smoking is definitely a highly debated topic as, yeah. as far as my industry goes. And uh, you have personal trainers on, you know, on every, on both sides of, you know, that. One thing about marijuana, you know, out like alcohol is processed through your liver. Uh, your body gets rid of it very quickly. Marijuana, on the other hand, is stored in your fat cells. Uh, it is it is much more difficult to get rid of marijuana in your body, um, and it can also, over time, alter your DNA. I'm not saying that if you have medical issues, don't use it, but one thing is, is a lot of times what we use marijuana for, for medical issues is to treat symptoms. It's to never get rid of our actual sickness. Now, granted, I'm not the judge here, and I don't have all the facts, and I'm not a doctor here on everything, but I do see a major push as far as doctors creating more reasons and more things on what to use marijuana for. So, I mean, you know, again, the Bible's not very clear as far as, you know, don't smoke marijuana, but I think, you know, I think we all have to use our own common sense and, you know, be your own judge of exactly what is right and what's wrong on it. So. Very good. Yeah. Any, even any, any other, to your point, any other, um, say, opiate or pain medicine has side effects. So you definitely have to weigh that against what you're trying to cover up or treat or, right. or deal with. Just like, you know, when you do chemotherapy, chemotherapy is treating a symptom. Sure. You're yeah. still going to have side effects from the chemotherapy, obviously. Mm -hmm. If you choose to use marijuana as treating a symptom, you're still going to have side effects from the marijuana. Sure. Sure. Just like you know, you hear on any kind of commercial for any prescription drug. That's right. Side you know, effects may include. Side effects may include. Da 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 da. And yes. Long as part of the commercial. Right. Exactly. Well. Uh, go ahead. Oh wait, wait. Before you go on, uh, we're gonna, okay. we're going to have Katie do her thing. But I want to thank you so much for your input. We have never had a response like we've had to this. Apparently, this is something that you're interested in, and we thank you so much. And uh, we thank the individual who suggested we deal with this topic. And wanted to remain nameless. And wants to remain nameless. So if you have any topics you want us to talk about, remember, we're here for you. We don't want to get up here and talk about stuff that's fun for us. We want to talk about stuff that's good for you. Let us know what you want us to talk about, and we'll be glad to do it if we can. And I think we've proven we are willing to tackle any <laughs> yeah. subject. Yeah. We, we have gotten Whoa. kicked off of the air before, and we're willing to get kicked off the air again. So let us know uh, what you want us to talk about. And um, if you enjoy this, and if this is beneficial, hit your share button. That's right. We've, now, we've got a lot of shares tonight, so I'm happy. Okay. Um, James, would you take the wheel while Katie does uh, her presentation, yep. please? Okay, cool. okay. Take it away, Katie. You've got something All right. for us tonight. Well... I have something that's near and dear to my heart because I want people to be healthy and happy. Last January, Amy Wang of the Washington Post read an article about the devastating effects of smoking cigarettes, tobacco consumption. She writes, smoking and its side effects cost the world economics more than one trillion dollars per year and kills about six million people each year. Wow. That's six million people every year. How many people died in Hitler's death camps? We think the total was about 6 million people. That was over a time period of several years. Well, today, we lose that many people to smoking every year. Now, when I bring this up tonight, I don't bring it up from the point of view of condemning those who smoke. On this program, we don't condemn people to the lake of fire. I bring it up because James and I work in the physical fitness industry and we're very aware of how people kill themselves every day through poor choices in their lifestyles, through diet, exercise, smoking, whatever it is. And smoking is just one way that people are killing themselves today. Back to the article, it says, this massive study called smoking one of the largest causes of preventable premature deaths in the world. And unless countries around the world begin putting more tobacco control policies in place, 
It warned the ballooning consequences will become not just a global public health issue, but an economic issue. The tobacco industry produces and markets products that kill millions of people prematurely, rob households of finances that could have been used for food and education, and impose immense health care costs on families, communities, and countries. This is according to Oleg Chesnov of the World Health Organization. Now let's look at a couple of things that should be very sobering to all of us. Experts in these studies noted some of the strongest resistance to tobacco control policies have come from governments. Yes, governments. The very entities that are supposed to exist for the good of their people. But these governments are pressured by lobbyists who say that limiting tobacco consumption will hurt their country's economy. The article says, tobacco industries will scare you into thinking that tobacco control measures are anti-poor when in fact the overwhelming evidence is actually the opposite. The number of jobs that depend on tobacco has been falling in most countries. For the vast majority of countries, implementation of tobacco control measures will have only a modest impact on tobacco-related employment and will not lead to the net job losses, it read. In the United States, the smoking rate has declined to an all-time low of 15%, but cigarette smoking remains the leading cause of preventable disease and death, according to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. Still, the United States could be doing better, according to Frank Kapoloka, <laughs> C-H-A-L-O-U-P-K-A an economics and public health professor in the University of Illinois at Chicago, end quote. In short, I want to say that if you're a young person who is thinking about smoking, don't do it. If you're an older person who smokes, quit. If you have to go see a doctor, go for it. See what they say. Read the scriptures that talk about self-control. God's word talks all about fighting these cravings and temptations that are bad for us. So take care of yourself. Have some self-respect. Treat your body well. It's the temple of the Holy Spirit. And just as a side note, um, I, there you know some natural ways to quit as well. So you can go to your doctor. You know, there's chewing gum, all different types of things. But I know uh, my father he used to smoke. I want to say maybe a pack, two packs of cigarettes a day. Um, whenever me and my sisters were born, he tried to quit a couple of times. But one of the biggest things was he had sunflower seeds everywhere. I know some people use hard candy, some people use chewing gum, but I'm telling you, my dad fought it hard just by chewing a bunch of sunflower seeds, and I'll never forget seeing them all over his truck. So whatever works best for you, you know, if you, if you can quit cold turkey, go for it. If not, you know, just find something else that works best for you. Very good. Thank you, Katie. Yeah, Katie knew I was going to, um, talk about uh, marijuana smoking and so I said Katie you're a health food nut and a fitness nut and why don't you take on smoking tonight so thank you so much I won't take on smoking the subject of smoking <laughs> yeah. all right so uh, what do we got here uh, Nancy you have any comments or anything I do I do um, uh, Dre Smith joined us um, Ray Hall wanted to know what was in my cup. It is really coffee, Ray. It is really coffee with creamer. He's, he's calling me out on it. Um, Maria Manning had a uh, topic she wants to talk about, so I will write it down. But also, it's um, how to deal with it when an employer does not allow an employee off to observe a holy day after several requests and a letter from an elder. So uh, something near and dear to people's hearts uh, in the spring holidays and then again in the fall, I'm sure. Okay. And Roger Martin said he quit smoking November 13th, 2001. Smartest thing he's ever done. You know, the thing about smoking yeah. is your lungs can recover. They can yeah. they can get back to normal. So that's the great thing about that. You can, you can come back for that. Yeah. Okay, so those are the things that I have. All right. Um, all right, we have run out of time, and it's all your fault because you all have so much to say about Sorry. this. Uh, James, um, I don't think there's any way we're going to get yours in. It's too no, long. I, I think this was a good place. I mean, I yeah. think you know, we got exactly what you know our viewers want to see. Okay, and I wonder, we might have time to squeeze Nancy's in because it's short. 
Uh, what do you think? Shall we shall we give it a try and see if we can get Nancy we'll in? We'll talk about the Kobayashi Maru. Kobayashi, what? Go ahead, Nancy. Let's give this a shot and yep. see what happens. Okay, this is where I start. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking about problems that Christians experience in life. This business of pot and alcohol and proper conduct at the feast. We go through these difficulties because this is the age of Satan. That's what makes it difficult. It's almost as though we're in a no-win situation in life. So I want to talk to you about the Kobayashi Maru. If you're not a Star Trek fan, you don't have any idea what I'm talking about. If you're not a fan, I will explain to you. In Star Trek, the series, the Kobayashi Maru was a training exercise required of all Starfleet Academy cadets. It was engineered to be a no-win scenario in order to test the character of the cadets in a situation where the outcome of their choice, whichever option they selected, no matter how they tried it, would be the loss of many, if not all, lives from their own crew and or the people who were civilians on the vessel Kobayashi Maru, which they were sent to rescue. It was a simulation. It game. was a simulation. It didn't really happen, but it's part of their training. Yeah. Well, of course, it was a show, TV show, so, TV show but, but even in the show, it was a training exercise, not a real thing. Now, ever since that fateful day in the Garden of Eden, when Eve listened to the serpent and Adam joined her in eating the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, mankind has been in a Kobayashi Maru situation. From that day forward, there has been no scenario in which we could rescue ourselves from the fate of eternal death. Now, famously, in the Star Trek a fictional series, Kirk, Captain Kirk, as a cadet, was unwilling to lose, and so he re-engineered the game so that he could rescue the Maru without any loss of life for his crew or the civilians. Well, when Jesus came to this earth in human form, suffered and died for sins, which we just pictured at Passover, he changed the game too. He changed it forever and gave us a path to eternal life. 1 Corinthians 15, 21-22 explains it like this. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. Of course, this was God's plan from the very beginning, to have Jesus slain for our sins. We read about that in Revelation 13, 8, where it talks about the uh, lamb being slain from um, the foundation of the world. Mankind's no-win situation required this perfect lamb of God. We Christians know who and what we were before our calling. And if we try to deny that, the word itself convicts us. Titus 3, 7 is just, uh, 3, 3 through 7 is just one example where we are called out on this issue. It says, For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy and hateful and hating one another. But when the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Having been justified by his grace, we also become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Believers can still count on that sacrifice every day to wash away our sins and set us back on a path of obedience. Daily, we ask for washing by the blood that is available to us. And daily, God's mercy is renewed towards us. And uh, Lamentations talks about that as well. So, at this time of the year, especially, we think about the Kobayashi Maru that we are involved in. And we are thankful uh, for Jesus our Savior. We understand that the scripture is not about just cleaning our hearts at this time. It, uh, cleaning our houses at this time. Not just about cleaning our houses, but about <laughs> cleaning our hearts at this time. So um, we, we thank, we're thankful and we, we praise God for Jesus, the game changer who rescues us from our own Kobayashi Maru. Very good. Do you have any last comments from our folks before we end the show? Let's any? see. Jesus or Yeshua? Uh, don't see. Yes, okay. Um, uh, Adeline Von Fostheim joined us so okay. hey, hey. all right so uh yeah no other comments about that okay so we want to thank you again for joining us uh james had a real good presentation on the love of god how it ties in with the commandments 
And even if we did have time, we wouldn't be able to do it because our okay. teleprompter crashed. It just died. Right. I mean, it is gone. We are just making it up as we go. Now, as we luckily, go. we had card, hard copy and went old school, and I kind of remembered what I had written. Yeah. However, if you do want to go see my presentation, you can go on my, my blog site, oh, yodayrider.blogspot.com, and you will be able to find it there. It's God's nature on love. Very good. Okay. Right. I'm, I'm going to go read it. <laughs> But, um, we'll but we'll get that in on the, on the next show. Absolutely. First, the next show. No, no, no. We're going to be costs. packed on the next show. Yeah, we got yeah, that. But God's it. love is a great subject no matter when we do it. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. Okay, so we don't have any last comments or questions, so we can end the show. Before we end, we want to thank you so much for being with us. We really appreciate your participation. Your participation was great tonight. We hope yeah. that you'll keep that up in future shows. Please do. Talk to and us. And hit your share button and let other people know that they can watch this show too with us and have a good time with us. Right. And the next time you see us, we will have eaten pizza. We had no pizza tonight, obviously. Yeah. But we had but, pot roast. But it was amazing delicious. roast that Nancy made. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was pot roast like... No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Wait, hot roast? No, no. What a coincidence. And Wes actually ate some salad. Shh, don't tell him. I had to really teach him how. I uh, wasn't sure what to do with it once it was in his mouth. <laughs> okay, okay, one last co comment. Anita says, between Vance and his Star Wars analogies and Nancy's Star Trek, y'all keep my attention. So <laughs> we'll, try to, we'll try to throw those comments in from time to time. Okay, for once we finished the show under time. We got two minutes to spare. So we're going to break it off early, and again, we really appreciate uh, you being with us. It was our privilege to uh, serve you tonight. And we've got a Absolutely. subject to start working on. And we've got a subject we're going to start working on. We can't do it next week or the following week, but we will get that we're going to uh, taken care it. of. We're going to talk about this. So. Okay, so thank you, and y'all have a good, good Sabbath. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Carl City at Mozzo Pizza. I want some of that Mozzo.